we wouldn't be alive if it was not for for mitochondria and uh, uh, the whole world would look a lot different without these uh, important uh, cellular powerhouses and uh, in naturopathic medicine, uh, we've always placed a, a strong importance uh, on energy and true energy. And, and true energy is really determined by how well your mitochondria are functioning. And what, what I've tried to get across uh, for, for decades now is that um, our energy levels are a little bit like a dimmer switch. And uh, sometimes uh, the light bulb has a lot of dust on it and we have to clean off the light bulb. But most often, it's it's because our, our dimmer switch is not turned fully bright. It's a little bit dim. And this really shows up not only in our energy levels, but also how well our brain is thinking. And one of the things that I've noticed as I've gotten older is that uh, I'm much brighter in the morning. And as the day goes on, especially if I don't take some time to meditate or take a nap, uh, I'm not as as bright as I was in the morning. And I think that's a good indication of uh, the importance of, of uh, making sure we get enough rest and recovery to allow our mitochondria to rebound. Uh, they get a little tired uh, if they're pumping all the time, uh, you know, 24 seven, they need, they need that, that break to, to cleanse and to, to kind of reboot and recharge. So what do you see as some of the big factors that are dimming that that dimmer switch or di dimming the, the the light bulb dimming the energy output what are some of the big drivers of why there is a fatigue epidemic and uh, a, an epidemic of poor mitochondrial function well yeah it's it's it, it's a number of different uh, factors and uh, it, it's kind of like the 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 blind blind men and the elephant you know it depends on mm -hmm. what expert you're talking to as to what they think is the most important I try to step back and and look at the whole picture and, and recognize that it's really an interplay uh, of a number of different factors that determine our mitochondrial function. Uh, pr particularly important are uh, essential nutrients. Uh, if, if, if we're deficient in any nutrient, uh, it's going to lead to impaired mitochondrial function. And when you when you look at nutrient deficiency, uh, it, it, even in developed uh, countries, you think, oh, you know, it's uh, there couldn't be people walking around with nutrient deficiencies. We, you know, we were overfed, but we're, we're undernourished. And if we look at something as simple as iron deficiency, which is the most common uh, deficiency in in the world, it's it's rampant in in uh, in, in certain uh, groups in, in the United States. Uh, uh, for example, in uh, studies looking at uh, uh, endurance athletes, female endurance athletes or uh, swimmers, uh, over 80% uh, are deficient in, in iron. Uh, we have a, a population that's becoming uh, more uh, plant-based in their nutritional choices. And as a result, uh, we're seeing uh, a lot of people becoming vegans and, and, and vegetarians and the rate of iron deficiency in those groups is really, really high. Uh, we have children with iron deficiency. Uh, as we get older, we don't absorb iron as efficiently. And so uh, just something as simple as an iron deficiency could be uh, a big factor in, in why many people aren't uh, uh, having high energy levels and are experiencing low mitochondrial function. And uh, one of my uh, uh, important discoveries uh, in, when looking at energy levels uh, was uh, a study that came out uh, in the 50s looking at at how long a woman could stand could stay on a treadmill walking at three miles per hour uh, and and what they found was that it was it was uh, <laughs> directly related to their their iron stores if their iron stores were low uh, their time on that treadmill was low but the better their iron stores, the longer they could they could stay on that treadmill. And uh, gee, I mean, I think every uh, menstruating woman should have uh, at least a yearly serum ferritin test that tells us the level of iron stores in the body. And if it's below 50, 
Uh, they need to uh, eat more iron rich foods and there's two types of iron. We have heme iron, which is found in, in animal products and we have non heme iron, which is found in, in, in plant foods. And the reality is, is that uh, heme iron is much better absorbed. So gee, for women that have really low uh, iron levels, uh, you know, maybe eating some liver a calf's liver or even fish liver, uh, you know, once or twice a week is a great way to, to boost uh, to boost iron levels. And, and of course, there are supplements, and 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 most of those supplements are the the non heme. We just have to use a sufficient level, uh, usually uh, 60 to 120 milligrams per day for a period of time until that level gets up. But you know that little recommendation, Ari, of, of if you're a woman menstruating and you're suffering from uh, low energy, particularly if you're a runner or a swimmer engaged in intense physical activity or, or exercise, get your serum ferritin level checked and make sure that you have enough iron to, to make energy. Mm. Are there any other notable nutrient deficiencies that, that stick out to you as being common in people with chronic fatigue? Any of the B vitamins, uh, your B vitamins are really important in, in, in uh, mitochondrial function. And the mitochondria are kind of like miniature nuclear power plants. So there's a lot of chemical reactions going on there. And if we don't have a diet that's rich in protective factors like flavonoids, uh, plant pigments, or carotenoids, or other plant-based antioxidants, then those mitochondria can become uh, become damaged, and uh, that uh, that results in, in low energy levels as well. So, uh, you know, eating a, a, a lot of uh, green leafy vegetables, a lot of a lot of colorful fruits and vegetables, uh, those are really important uh, dietary goals for enhancing uh, uh, mitochondrial function. And then, uh, lastly, something that I look at is. Uh, what is a person's exposure to damaging factors to the mitochondria? And <laughs> my gosh, Ari, if, if we look at uh, one of the worst mitochondrial uh, damagers is Tylenol, acetaminophen. And uh, we have 50 million Americans that regularly use uh, acetaminophen or Tylenol on a weekly basis. And every time you take a Tylenol, it it dramatically reduces your uh, glutathione stores. And as a result, it makes your mitochondria more susceptible to damage, and that leads to decreased function. So uh, that's an example of a really serious uh, damaging factor to mitochondria. Cigarette smoke, uh, vaping is absolutely deadly to mitochondrial function. Uh, uh, environmental toxins like pesticides, herbicides, heavy metals like lead, mercury, cadmium, uh, a lot of different uh, prescription and illegal drugs are all uh, serious damagers to the mitochondria. So uh, we have to provide all essential nutrients. We have to make sure that we have a good array of antioxidants from our diet. We have to reduce exposure to damaging factors. And as I discussed uh, at, at the beginning, we have to take time for rest and recovery so that our mitochondria have a chance to, to <laughs> take a little break uh, and uh, cleanse, recover, and then start putting out more uh, ATP.